here we are then, one year of ownership, actually a bit more than that now, in my Z4 Coupe. The time has truly flown by as it often does, but I can definitely say I've enjoyed every minute of ownership in this car. We've covered quite a few different kind of elements, if you like, in the various videos we've done while I've owned this car. And I think one of the most important things that's really shone through is just the versatility, how usable it is. Many of you know this has been my daily for the past kind of 14 months, and it's just been brilliant. It's not necessarily a car that you think would be the most usable or the most practical, but it really does strike a great balance between the different factors, I suppose, that were important to me. Obviously these days, everyone's lives are a little bit different than they were kind of two years ago before the events of the world unfolded. But really, I've done quite a lot of miles in it. I've probably done about six or 7,000. So I'd definitely say I know the car very well inside out. I think one of the most important things on the usability point is the interior and just how comfortable a place it is to be. These seats are really supportive, but they've got great bolstering. And having done quite a few longer journeys, every single time I get out of it, you never really feel uncomfortable. So they're very well designed. And yeah, I think that's one of the things that really makes it usable. You know, in a car that's naturally got firm suspension, is low to the ground, you know, those things that inherently would make a car uncomfortable, this seems to overcome it. And of course, we touched before on just how big the boot is and how much stuff you can fit in there, and it's, it's really very usable. You never feel like there's much compromise from owning it which again, can't be said for a lot of these smaller sports cars. I think another thing on the usability point is I've actually driven this car in pretty much every single different type of weather you can imagine, and it's handled it fantastically every single time. People are put off by these rear wheel drive cars because they're not good in, in the winter or in the rain or in the snow. And honestly, it's just, it's really exaggerated because this was brilliant. I drove this in snow, you know, <laughs> with the traction control on you've got nothing to worry about that's always the thing that you've got to drill home and it, it handles it brilliantly there was plenty of traction to be honest there was no kind of sign of getting stuck and obviously being in the UK we get a lot of rain as well I've driven it in the rain countless times today we've had quite a bit of rain and it's it's absolutely fine you've always got plenty of traction you know it, it's just I can't really emphasize the usability bit enough important thing to me though in a world that is changing so fast is we've got a three liter naturally aspirated straight six the n52 one of bmw's greatest straight six engines paired to a six-speed manual gearbox and rear wheel drive like is there any better recipe just listen to that it's just <laughs> You're not gonna get that for modern cars. That, that is gone, okay? The only thing you're gonna get is fake sounds through the speakers, which doesn't appeal to me in the slightest. And I think just the way we're seeing the modern car industry change almost allows me to appreciate this car more and more. I've really felt that in the last six months or so. It's just something we are not going to see again, sadly. And it just it feels so good as well on these B roads loads of grip you've got 255 section tires on the rear so you can just chuck it about and it's just great get the heel and toe in yeah this is what BMW should be proper driver's cars It revs right out to 7,000 RPM. Yeah, proper engine. And you know, we, we talked about this whole 
usable performance thing many times. It's, it's something that I really want to drill down on. And in this car, of course, that is one of the key elements because it's only, only 265 horsepower. And these days that looks like quite a measly figure, but you know, the weight is 1,320 kilos or thereabouts. So it's definitely a lot quicker than it might look on paper. And I never get in this car and drive it and think this needs more power. And I think that's a good sign because that's when you know that the power is adequate. But I think as well, just things like the steering and just how connected you generally feel with the road. Like some of these newer cars, you do tend to feel very isolated. And you know, you're, you're so well cocooned, I suppose, in the interior, but this the whole time, you can probably see me moving around in my seat as we go over the bumps and I can feel every single one of them. And that's what it's all about because you just feel so connected. It really makes it such a great experience. However, only a car for that length of time, there are obviously going to be some cons. I think one of the main things really, and, and it is generally very minor, is the gearbox is a little bit, not crunchy, but it's just quite notchy when it's cold. It really takes a bit to kind of get up to temperature, if you like, and, and start to operate normally. So on those colder mornings, that first to second change is sometimes a bit unpleasant. And it's often the same with the clutch, actually. I find it just needs a little bit of heat before it starts to really become predictable and, and nice to use. But it's, it's genuinely very minor. I think sometimes the steering isn't maybe as good as some of the hydraulic racks, and you'd obviously expect that. It's electrically assisted. It's never going to be quite as good. Um, it's still good enough, but there's just sometimes it just feels slightly weird. And I think, you know, it has a tendency as well because of the quite aggressive suspension setup, I suppose. It, it follows cambers quite a bit, so you can just feel the steering wheel twitching around a bit more than maybe you'd like, but honestly, in some ways, that, that could be viewed as a positive, because again, it comes back to that whole thing about being connected to the road, and you can really feel what's going on. So I think that's why it doesn't bother me too much. I can understand some people may not like that feeling, but to me, it's, it's a very minor kind of con, if you like. Obviously, these days as well, with the kind of crazy fuel prices that we're seeing across the world at the minute, a car like this is certainly not cheap to run. But, you know, every single time I put fuel in it and I take it out on a road, <laughs> I don't care about the cost of the fuel because revving that engine out to 7,000 RPM and, and kind of pushing it through the gears, it just, it's so worth it. It's worth the money in fuel, really, because <laughs> uh, it's just so enjoyable. some of the other costs then well as it happens I've actually just booked this in for a service but I'm also going to be getting a couple of other bits of work done and the main reason for that is I don't really have any history on things like the water pump the thermostat and also the serpentine belt which are all things that at this kind of age and at this kind of mileage um, you know you really need to think about changing them more so as more so for preventative maintenance really uh, so kind of those things aside, the other things I'm going to be getting done are just an oil service, air filter service. Um, I'm probably going to get the brake fluid changed as well, just because I think it's been about three years since that was done, so it probably needs doing really. So all those things aren't that expensive. I think all of that is probably under £200. 
Obviously adding in things like the water pump, thermostat, it's an electric water pump on this, so it is pretty expensive. But that's preventative maintenance. I wouldn't really need to do that necessarily. So the actual cost of running it are surprisingly low, I would say. The car tax is pretty high. I think it's 360 pounds a year now in the UK, which yeah, it's quite a lot. But as I've mentioned before, these older cars tend to get a bit hammered a bit on the emissions. So yeah, it's not the best. Insurance is not too bad at all for me. I'm a younger guy, so generally pay a bit more than probably a lot of you guys watching anyway. But you know, these are just the cost of ownership. So I honestly don't think it's too bad. I did change the front tires to Michelin Pilot Sport 4s last year, and that was a few hundred pounds. But all in all, we are well less than a thousand pounds for a year's worth of ownership. So I suppose then the thing we've got to address, am I going to sell it? And as it currently stands, no, I have absolutely no plans to sell it. Originally, when I bought this car, I thought, you know, I'll probably keep it three to six months and change into something else. But I've just totally fallen in love with it and I have absolutely no reason to do that. It's definitely something that I would kind of like to add to a collection, so to speak, rather than get rid of. And, and I think I have found a pretty good example here too. So that's always a bonus. So I think we'll see what happens over the next year or so. But for now, it's definitely staying. So then, I guess we better sum up my one year of ownership with the Z4 Coupe. As you can probably tell, it is <laughs> overwhelmingly positive. Um, I really don't have too much to complain about at all. And yeah, if I, I know I've seen in the comments from various videos, a lot of people have, you know, either owned Z4 Coupes before or are now looking to buy one. I've seen the videos we've done and that's really great to see. And, and if you are thinking about doing that, I honestly would highly highly recommend it it's a fantastic car and don't be put off by the age of it or the potential running costs if you find yourself a good one it's really not as bad as people sometimes make out with these older bmws and it's just so much fun to own i mean as i keep saying cars these days these modern cars that manufacturers are churning out are just becoming more and more docile and kind of uninteresting to me i mean that might just be me but honestly i think they've really lost touch with what makes a good driver's car and getting back into these older cars is just it's fantastic because it's they were so well built and they're really geared towards the driver which is definitely important to me so yeah to sum up absolutely brilliant i have no plans to sell i'm really looking forward to spending more time in this car i would love to try and take it on a track day at some point soon and also into europe perhaps into next year take it down some german autobahns and uh, see how it behaves but yeah, um, I really hope you've enjoyed all the videos we've done on this car so far. If, if you do want to see anything else, please do let me know in the comments. Also, you can follow us on Instagram. We are at foot.2.pedal. I'll put the link in the description. There's quite a bit of uh, kind of content we post on there that you will never see on YouTube. Take quite a few pictures of cars and, and various different things. So definitely go and give that a follow if you're on Instagram. But that's all from me. I'll see you in the next one.